Wonderful. Well, welcome to those of you who have joined for the um, for the uh, closing ceremony. And uh, our intentions are to be, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, crisp, concise, but also just punctuate a few things that we think might be useful as part of this closing. And from all of the perspectives within the Mental Health Promotion Innovation Fund. So this uh, is the closing session. And um, in fact, again, another tension to mention that it will actually move us into a space of opening for applying what we learned and our work together over the next year and beyond. So uh, both a closing and an opening. We'll hear from the three different Mental Health Promotion Innovation Fund perspectives. We'll hear from the Public Health Agency of Canada, from the projects, and then from the hub. So first up, I really appreciate um, um, Shannon being willing to offer a few reflections and remarks on behalf of the MHPIF team. Um, I will invite Shannon Bradley Dexter, who um, many of you will know, hopefully most of you will know. Um, uh, she will be offering a few reflections on behalf of the FAC team. And, you know, I have to say that, um, and this is, this, is, um, this is very genuine, all members of the, the FAC team um, working within the Mental Health Promotion Innovation Fund, they, they truly are, um, they truly are aces. I mean, they're smart, they're dedicated, they're open to new ideas. I mean, you know, this is, this is tricky stuff when you've run a program for over a decade that didn't have a hub and then there's a hub and I mean, on their creation, and yet it's a, it's a real sort of organizational shift and, and uh, their openness to, um, um, to new ideas and our mutual exchange with each other, it's really been fantastic. Um, and they care. They, quite frankly, they really do care about uh, what they're doing, about the projects. Um, and I, I have the pleasure of working most closely with Shannon. Um, uh, she brings, oh my goodness, so much expertise to knowledge development and exchange and beyond. She also brings, oh my gosh, I, I've said so many times um, to my household members, you know, this woman, she brings relentless enthusiasm and support for the hub. In fact, Shannon is one of the uh, visionaries behind the creation of the hub um, and as, you know, the hub being an innovation within the Innovation Fund. So with that, Shannon, I'd like to uh, turn the mic over to you to offer a few reflections on the event. Oh, well, thanks, Star. What a great introduction. Lovely, I really appreciate it. And yeah, I'm happy to connect with everyone here now and have the opportunity to make a few closing comments as we wrap up this three days together. So as Barb mentioned, yeah, my name is Shannon bradley Dexter. I work with the Mental Health Promotion Innovation Fund. And I primarily work on the strategy and implementation of this fund, along with the collaboration now with Barb and her team on the KDA Hub. And I'm going to kind of summarize a few observations and comments from our time together. And this has also been drawn from reflections from our team. And then Vicki Lair, uh, a colleague, will also provide a few closing comments as well today. So first, I do want to acknowledge and thank the Coast Salish people specifically the Squamish Nation and the tsleil waututh Nation, whose territory in which, in which North Vancouver resides, where I live. And I value the opportunity to live, learn, and raise my children here on this traditional territory. So I, I do, I want to thank all of you for your active participation and exchange to make the innovation fund really come to life in the last three days. And this is a strategic funding program that you're all a part of. And as you know, and I think Barb kind of iterated this uh, in her introduction, that our team and the way that our model is developed for funding, it really is a continuous, we strive for continuous improvement. And that improvement comes from the ideas from your funded program and the learnings and the um, evaluation results, but also our informal discussions and input from meetings, just like this, from discussions. So we really strive to have a funding program that is responsive and evolves to the realities of individuals and communities. So I have been working in mental health 
population of mental health promotion for uh, about 10 years. And as noted in the opening by Margaret Berry, like we are really in a time of opportunity and challenge. And this has been kind of reflected in many comments throughout the last few days together. And of course, like the pandemic has provided many obstacles, but also opportunities on how we adapt, improve and promote mental health and how we aim to rebuild and reconnect. And I think that your work, your projects and the collective mental health promotion and innovation fund community that the Canadian e is forming is in a great position to really help inform program and policy within FAC and beyond. And one of those steps, of course, is through the pandemic adaptation study that you've all been a part of. And I just wanted to say that we really appreciate that. And there's a lot of interest within FAC and our colleagues uh, on this work. And I think it has a lot of potential to inform us going forward. So I just wanted to comment and maybe reiterate a few things that I heard that I think I really capture the spirit and of, our, of this funding program and where we're collectively going together. So the first uh, is this, this need and this approach of adopting a heart-centered approach for the work that you do. And many of you are already engaged in this and it was really captured so well by Wendy Fletcher when she said, uh, every individual is of infinite power and worth. I think that to me, I, I heard that and I thought this is it, this is, you know, the ways that you're working with individuals, with families, and with communities. And um, this kind of sparks into so many of the leading discussions around social innovation and uh, in particular the way, as I guess, social innovation as a way of working with individuals and families, seeking youth engagement, leadership, and empowerment of the participants in your program. And then that is leading to the kind of social innovation and development that this, this program is trying to spark. So thanks to Mark Cabbage for really kind of illustrating those, the, the Francis Wesley approach and the models around social innovation. So I think that is so key and certainly where we are moving in phase two and phase three of this program. And then along with this work that you do with individuals and, and families is also the work in the broader social determinants of health. And this is what makes this learning program quite unique, to have the emphasis and work across multiple dimensions to promote mental health. And we have a models uh, of social determinants of health to draw upon, but I just want to acknowledge the leadership that we have to work and um, kind of focus on Indigenous models of wellness and mental wellness. And thank you to Brenda Rasool for setting the theme for us and to um, really honor Indigenous place-based self-determined ways of knowing and understanding the world, which is really connected to mental wellness. And I think um, as we move forward, the, this funding program and the design for policy and community-based programs that have, there's many elements, I think there's leadership from the nature of, of how Indigenous health and wellness models have been articulated. In particular, that relationship between humans, like between us and our natural world. And this is so interrelated and extends to the mental, emotional, physical, and spiritual domains. And I think that was great. It was really well summarized by Carla and Taylor today from um, the BC or the First Nations Health Authority, speaking of the concept of life promotion. And uh, certainly, I think that moves our discussion to really that upstream work and um, enhancing the broader conditions for mental health. So finally, I think you're aware that this program has two main objectives. One is the funding of your interventions and the testing to design, test, and then expand effective interventions and ultimately evaluate long-term interventions. And there's an opportunity here for up to 10 years of funding that is very unique. And um, I think you saw today with some of the innovation strategy programs who presented had an opportunity to reflect and learn from their intervention. And of course, the spire change in those broader social determinants of health. And I think, um, yeah, it's just a unique thing to be a part of in terms of having a collective impact and moving forward population mental health. The second objective is, of course, 
the knowledge development change and for us this is equally weighted alongside the funding of the interventions. And yeah, congratulations to the KDE Hub for just doing a, a wonderful job with this workshop and connecting and creating this broader mental health promotion community. And uh, I'm sure many of you have made connections that you'll follow up on as uh, I have. But the way we think about KDE &E, uh, within the strategic funding program is also so connected to the way we think about partnership development and broader systems change because it's that exchange of knowledge, the, the learnings from your program that seek to influence some of these um, upstream broader social determinants of health. So I know, for example, like many of you, you're working in fields of early childhood development, food systems, the built environment, or the digital environment as examples. And that's where through the process of scale up, we start to see impact in policy, practice and program design that um, really makes the long-term sustained impact for this funding program. So the KPD &E Hub is here to support that work as are we on the um, innovation fund team. So please reach out as we, as we kind of move along all of this work together. And also I wanted to just give an update briefly on uh, an area of focus for us over the next few, few years and particularly right now is we're really uh, working on enhancing our work on health equity in our funding program. And we've learned that there are, you know, there are um, so many opportunities on our team, but also as a funding program to integrate the language and our materials, but look and seek to how we understand and measure it and then can report on some impacts on health inequity reduction. And I know all of you are working on that too. So we'll be in touch with that because I think we um, have a lot to shape on this work together. So I have so many reflections and it's just the interest of time. I know I'm going to need to wrap it up here, but thank you again so much for your active participation. I look forward to continuing to work on all of this together and um, I'll pass it on to my colleague, Vicki Laramie. Thank you. Hi, so uh, je tenais simplement à remercier chaleureusement, à tout, vous remercier chaleureusement tous et toutes pour avoir choisi d'être présents à, à ce, cet incroyable symposium um, aux différents panélistes et présentateurs. Merci de votre partage d'expérience, de connaissances, uh, d'expertise. Uh, special thanks to the KDNE &E, uh, Hub team, the Secretariat but also the resource collaborative members. Um, I think I can speak for everyone to, to say that this has been uh, truly the best virtual and interactive conference I attended. And I, and I have to say that um, Stephanie Priest that did the opening remark um, shared that with all our division uh, manager this morning. So I, I thought I would share the news with you. Um, I think it's a great start uh, to the year 2021 to have the, the kind of event like this. And um, I think I'm talking for everyone on our team to say that we're really looking forward to working closely with the hub and the project in the coming years to continue having that kind of uh, occasion to share, discuss, and uh, yeah. So thank you so much. Wow, what a lovely tag team. Thanks so much to both of you. Uh, really appreciate that. The, the next voice that we want to bring in is the voice of the project. Now we we as the hub, we, we purposely didn't choose a valedictorian from the projects. Um, we, <laughs> we extended an invitation in our note last evening uh, to share any reflections from a project perspective. Um, we'd love to hear from you. I mean, I, I will I will in fact reserve five minutes for myself at the end. <laughs> Just five, I promise. But uh, um, we'd really love to hear from you. I mean, unmute. Um, uh, we can't hear from all 20 of you, of course, but uh, you can unmute, um, type anything into chat as you wish. Just, you know, some of some of your reflections as uh, um, we come to a close of this of this time together. Are there any project members who would like to uh, share any reflections? We welcome those now. The conference made me much more curious about all the other projects and that that's helpful in terms of being able to develop my priorities more for engaging so 
Thank you, Brian. Others, Claire. Yeah, thanks, Barb. You know, I'm, I've been thinking a lot about this issue of what, what is good enough evidence for scale. Uh, I was thinking about it you know, when Mark said we shouldn't scale everything and um, that there ideally would be some evidence before you start scaling. But then we've also talked about how context dependent this is. And I, I think that's something that I'd, I'd love some space for people to talk about, but also some direction from Public Health Agency of Canada, because if the next phase is going to be moving promising work into scale up, it'd be really helpful to have a sense of what kinds of evidence would be good enough evidence in this context. And it's, again, it's not just the evidence, it's also the need for a particular intervention and the alignment with other evidence-informed approaches or, but I guess that's, you know, it's, it's clear that in this first phase, we didn't all go out and do a quick RCT and now we're ready to, to move forward. So what's, what's good enough evidence in terms of within the group? How do, we, how do we convey that evidence when it's sort of different than what some, some stakeholders are looking for? And, uh, and, what, and what evidence is public health going to want to see in terms of moving forward into a phase two? I love that concluding with a question. It's not to be answered here, but I love that concluding with a question. I'm just scanning and forgive me, I mean, jump in. I'm scanning for people who have unmuted um, that may want to uh, share a little something. Oh, well, now you're all muting. <laughs> Are there any of the other projects that would just like to... Say hello, offer reflection. You're very welcome, Emily. Sure, um, yeah, just thank you so much for the opportunity. I wasn't really sure going into this how spending uh, you know, two and a half days online was going to, to work, but it, it worked really well. And it was really nice to be able to at least start to connect with some other folks who are doing similar work and um, build this community. So appreciate everything that went into that. Thank you, Emily, very much. And Louise chimed in with uh, agreeing with Claire's question. Very good questions. And Julie, thank you. Thank you for the many sources of inspiration. Oh, thank you, Julie. Any other comments? And from Jen, oh, we've got more. You probably don't want me to read all of these. So great for, sure, I'll read this one. This is a great first virtual symposium, I'm kidding. Um, well organized, impressed. Oh, thank you. The technology, the breakout groups. Let's all just raise our hands to Eric for everything tech. Honestly, I mean, it's been a, a Herculean, Herculean effort. Um, yay! I love those reactions. Um, uh, yeah, the virtual platform, recognizing that uh, uh, we'll be on that. Oh, my goodness. You know what? Um, I can't even keep up with these, which is so classic. <laughs> Barb can't keep up with what's going on. Um, yeah, leaving with quite a bit of food for thought. Um, um, fantastic, refreshing, invigorating. Some thank yous extended. Uh, Andrea from New Zealand, worth waking up early for. That says a lot from Andrea, trust me. <laughs> um, Interesting way to connect. Kudos to the tech behind the conference. Seamless. Oh, thank you. Thanks to all of you for a few comments. And um, it's it's really you know it's it's required some endurance to um, uh, to be online. That's for sure. But uh, um, we really you know we really appreciate the sort of active engagement that all of you have had for sure. I promise that um, I would be brief at the end. I will I will offer just a few. Uh, truly uh, closing remarks for the event and um, um, uh, won't won't repeat what we've what we've heard others say. So um, my remarks will uh, answer three questions very briefly. What did we, the collective we do? How did we do it and why were we really here? So you have to wait for that third question because why were we really here? I'm not sure you know what I'm gonna have to say there. So what did we do? Together, we explored the people and places of the MHPIF, the positioning and niche of the program, the influence of the pandemic and the potential of all of our efforts to advance child and youth mental health promotion in Canada. Day one, we set a precedent for our time together over the three days. We focused primarily on positioning the MHPIF 
and the people and places in the program and the broader community that gathered. Day two, we focus mostly on international, Canadian, your own, and the pandemic context. Day three, today we explored context sensitive approaches to planning for the long term and the short term. So um, I was going to ask you, are you open to a quick sort of by the numbers review? But you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. So here goes. And I, 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 I hope I have them in order. Top to bottom or highest numbers to lowest. So 141 registrations, 30 contributors, contributors as in the speakers, panelists, et cetera, facilitators, resource people, 48 wellness wiggles. And that's if every, that's every 10 minutes, once the wellness wiggles were mentioned, 27 small groups, 20 MHPIF projects, 15 members of the hub's extended family, that's the hub resource collaborative members, all actively engaged in planning and um, executing this event and um, the hub's uh, um, treasured consultants. 11 provinces and territories, eight jam boards. <laughs> I'm going to start. We do get down to the partridge and the pear tree, trust me. Eight jam boards, eight hours of synchronous time together, five hub secretariat team members, three panels, two pre recorded presentations, and one Hoova platform <laughs> that I do want to say will remain open for the coming weeks. So uh, you can return to it for networking, for materials, et cetera. We'll, we'll follow up with more information on that, but I just want you to know that once we close down today, it's not gonna be the end of the platform. So the Whova platform will indeed remain open. I don't have a number right now for the number of shareable products. So um, we will be adding that. There will be a number of shareable products that we've tried to, to name throughout the event. And um, that too will be part of our, our follow-up with you. The second question I promised, how did we do it? So this, I mean, with abundant thanks to all of you, uh, basically we've tried our best uh, to acknowledge and thank individuals and teams along the way throughout the event, before the event, we'll do so after the event as well, but in the moment um, for, their, for their contributions. Um, um, uh, and we also have done that before the event, and as I say, will afterwards in our public health, or public health, <laughs> our public uh, hub updates, the ones that you receive every four to six weeks, and in symposium products to come. For now, I just, uh, um, it feels uh, far too modest, but I just want to say a very sincere uh, thank you to all of you uh, once again. I will uh, call out and acknowledge the four members, <laughs> I won't be able to say much because I'll, <laughs> I'll start crying. Four members of the Hub Team Secretariat. Um, and I would really like, um, <laughs> Eric, one more technology thing, please. I would really like you to um, spotlight uh, the team members. Huge kudos to this team. They, they are truly outstanding. Eric, Aneta, Renata, and, and Mary Alice. Um, and uh, I, I just, I won't say more. You've heard. Where's Renata? Is she in the spotlight? <laughs> I'm looking for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there she is. There Thank we you. go. There we go. So huge uh, round of applause for, for the four of you. Thank you ever so much. Um, and I think. Sorry, I just have to add Barb in here too because. Oh. <laughs> Someone's got to thank her as well for chairing the, the event and uh, and she is part of the same team as us too. So <laughs> had to throw you in there too, Barb, sorry. Thank you, Eric, okay. <laughs> so now you don't get the rest of the week off, huh? So <laughs> or some teasing. So um, I'd also like to just say thanks also to the um, Public Health Agency of Canada. Uh, for funding the hub and to um, Renison University, our co uh, University College, our hub home, without whom uh, we would not exist. And so um, there again, we're circling back to the start of the event where um, both the public health agency through Stephanie Priest and Renison University College through Wendy Fletcher offered their opening remarks and their best wishes. So the question, the final question that I'll propose uh, an answer to, why? were we really here? It's 
it, it's not until some experiences, I think most experiences happen before you realize the essence of that experience. Um, and I do believe <laughs> the essence of this first symposium, our main reason for gathering this year was to nourish, to nurture everyone who chose to participate, to nourish our heads, nourish our hearts. And in this evolving community, uh, in the field of mental health promotion more generally, heads and hearts are so deeply connected. It's certainly been my experience with, with everybody that uh, I'm engaged with. Alongside naming and exploring many tensions throughout the event, there's been a pervasive sentiment of hope. You saw it in the word cloud this morning. It has been pervasive um, throughout all three of the days. And to be fueled through a shared commitment to look for the good, see the good, share the good, and amplify the good. And stealing from Alicia Keys, I will just say, <laughs> good job, everyone. <clears throat> To complete the circle of our journey together, we'll return to the context of the MHPIF, the people and places of the MHPIF that were compiled in the video montage. The link for the montage um, will be placed in the chat. If you choose to watch it um, again, or for the first time for any of you, as you depart uh, from this event, please feel free, just click on that link um, and you can leave the meeting while the video is playing with thanks once again to Eric for the posting of that on YouTube and, and uh, making that available. All of you, finally, all of you will receive one final email from the hub that's related to the symposium. <laughs> Dream on, it's not the final email you'll get from the hub ever, <laughs> but it is the final one related to the symposium. And you will receive that this week. Uh, we'll share with you what you can expect as follow-up uh, from us, um, uh, some of the shareable products, for example. Um, and it will, it will also invite you to uh, please share your, your feedback about uh, the event, not just open-ended. We actually do have a, um, an event uh, evaluation form. <laughs> wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be a misstep if we, if we didn't do that? Um, um, and mostly about your, about your experience of it. We try our best to apply what we know and learn as we go. So your feedback will help us learn as we go uh, to best serve um, you, this, this evolving community. So merci, thank you, um, and until the next time.